Well, hello, I am Jeff Hajek. I'm the owner and founder of Relaction. And today I'd just like to talk to you a bit about um, something that I've coined a term for called low key Kanban. Now, this is not a class on how to do Kanban. There's a whole other section on that. I've got a lot of information on how to do the, I guess, the uh, formal Kanban systems. And it, a, a good Kanban system is a pretty formal structure, the process of how you manage it, where you put it, how you calculate the numbers and all that sort of thing. But there's this rift between the things that make sense to do formal kan Kanban on and then the other stuff, the stuff that maybe isn't quite as um, conducive to putting that whole structure in place where, I mean, let me give you an example. So um, many years ago, I think we're going on 15 or so years now that I've been doing the action. I started out writing a book and then it turned into a couple of training sessions and it turned into a company where I sold PowerPoint online. And now it is a training platform with a whole bunch of videos. And I also sell uh, these training kits. So this is my 5S training kit, visual controls. I have three of these right now. I have a flow kit. I have a, a polka yoke. And when I first started, it was just this one. But um, it turned into like the the flow production. It's, it's kind of a, a common one you'll see a lot of companies put together and they kind of wing it. I've formalized that and made a flow production training kit. I have a very unique one, my polka yoke one, where it kind of shows people how to formalize processes and lock things in place. So I've done these over the years, and every time I do add a new training kit, you know, as you can see, in this one there's a box, there's the labels. If I pop it open, you can see I have a, so make sure I can get this all here. There's a, there's a manual that goes in it, and it's got a coil binding, a front cover, back cover. And then you go through some packing materials. Um, it's got these pamphlets you give out. And the whole premise, premise of this is that some of these are visual and the other ones are written out in paragraph form. But I need, the, I need the lamination for it. I need the comb bindings. I need the glossy paper. And then you got, oh, I'm going to fix this now, but a whole bin full of Legos that make up the models. And then the bin itself, there's foam in the bottom. This comes with the box. But as you can see, there's a whole bunch of parts that go along with producing these Lego kits. So as you can imagine, when you're starting out a business and you have uh, fairly low sales, you don't want to stock a whole bunch of all of these items. You know, just buying the Legos, you know, you can run up a really big tab on buying Legos. And trust me, I've run up some huge expenses on, on restocking, depending on how things um you know, how they, how they flow and come and ebb and flow and when you drop a bunch of cards at once. So the issue that I started running into is early on, I would have materials that, you know, this is the sticker paper now. And I've, I used to buy these in packs of a hundred. It was the only ones I could find. And that actually worked well, that kept their color and didn't peel at the edges and were easy enough to, to separate apart. But it came in packs of 100, and when I was first starting out, it would take me a while to sell 100 of those training kits, and it's not as long nowadays, um, especially with three different kits that I'm selling, so I, I go through them a lot quicker. But at the time, I would have these, you know, the, 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 uh, the sticker paper, and then I had the glossy paper, so I'd, I'd be burning up all this stuff slowly over time. And... I didn't have a good Kanban system in place because, you know, you're, you're brand new and you're running a little stuff. And it's kind of weird that I wouldn't do it in early on. I don't know why I didn't do it. Eventually I did. Um, but the whole premise is it doesn't make sense to put in a full two-bin system with the materials like that where you have to buy 100. And then suddenly whenever I break in, you know, finish the first bin and break into the second bin, I would be reordering the first stock. comes off of Amazon, so sometimes it's there same afternoon, next day. So eventually I, I was realizing if I did a formal Kanban for it, I would have way too much inventory when my sales were lower. So I started using reorder points. And, you know, with, with this, I could set up a paper in, and uh, actually I, no, I don't know what I do with those. I just, I just started out a new form and I don't know where I put them. I think I put them away. Um, but it's a reorder point form where you can slide it into a stack. 
and just something I, you know, you pick up along the years, you, you do that and now I'm putting it out on the website. So, um, check into the training, um, listings if you're, if you're a member and you'll, um, it'll be out there pretty soon if it's not here already, um, by the time I post this. So, but the whole point of it is just a sheet of paper you put in there. You can attach your combine to the paper. When you get down below a certain level, you see that and you can reorder. So when I'm running really low, um, sales, you could put it down there maybe in the last 10 items so that you would only be ordering when there's 10 left, you'd see the little red card pop up and it's something that's used in formal comment systems too. But the issue is with just me operating out of an office, who do I drop the cards to? So the cards are really a communication tool. So it's really communicating to myself, but I just had um, a real basic collection point. And then once I ordered it, I put it in another box until the items came in and then I reset the, the combat system once I, I replenished it. But the point of this is that when you're a small business or even if you're working in an office and you want to make sure that your own stuff doesn't run out, you know, you normally you can go to supply cabinet, but if you have a small office and the supply cabinet is not well managed, you can put these in place. But the point of it is to just put in what works for you rather than trying to put in a formal system where you have to put on rules and you know you, you want to follow the processes you put in place but you don't need the level of rigidity that you would have in a full comment system and i call it low-key common because you know when you're a small business owner and you're trying to do a bunch of things all at once you want things to help you out but you don't want things they're going to take too much effort to manage because, you know, you're the accountant, you're dealing with the legal stuff, you're doing marketing, you're doing production work, you're doing sales. When you're doing all that stuff, <clears throat> you don't want to be caught, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't want to be caught up having to spend a lot of time on things that don't add much value. So just trying to make the point is like, you want to be structured but not rigid, if that makes sense. You don't want to have, you know, in a formal comment system, you'll have a, a Kanban board. We put stuff up on a day it's supposed to come in there. And this happens a lot when you have longer lead times and things. And you might have two bin or, you know, three Kanbans where you have a, they call it over the road Kanban, where it's like you're actually planning one of your Kanbans is going to be on a truck somewhere at all times. And there's lots of different ways you can set up really, really formal, really standardized processes that everybody knows and everybody follows and you have rules about what to do with the combo cards. You treat them like controlled items. And the problem is if you try and do that in a small home office, it becomes a little onerous and it falls to the wayside pretty quickly when other things are happening. So I call it low key combo because you don't want to get wrapped up in the details on it, but you want to use it as the tool to help you make your ordering processes easier. So, I often say this to people, especially when they're in smaller businesses, is that you can grow into the formal processes when you talk about standard work and all the other things. But the more you start doing it early on and the more you get used to it early on, the better off you'll be. So um, the last thing I want to talk about with this is I'll just kind of look at over my notes on the screen here. And in small businesses, you often have very inconsistent vendors. If you're buying off of Amazon, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're buying off of Amazon, you may end up having buying it from a different vendor each time, and they might have different lead times, and they may have different order quantities. I buy my uh, the the Lego bricks that I use off of a marketplace, and I have a, a select group of vendors, but they don't always have all the parts I need. So often I will have to buy from different vendors and stock up, and it's a very inconsistent hard to manage process if you try to do it rigidly like you would with a Kanban where you're ordering a specific quantity every time. Sometimes you look at the, the listings and there's not a lot available and you want to stock up right away with everything that's out there because you don't know when it's going to start plussing back up in there. So it's, it's a kind of a system I've developed over the years where I'm able to maintain my inventory levels. But if I try to do it with a formal Kanban system, it would fail miserably because I would be spending too much money on the shipping to make it worthwhile and it just it would just fall apart very quickly. So um low key Kanban. It makes it easy to do. I can still put the Kanban cards in there. I can still 
have a target that I shoot for. I still use reorder points on those Legos. But don't get wrapped up on the details if the details are going to hamper you rather than help you early on. But always keep in mind that you are taking a shortcut and that the right way to do it as you grow and get more people involved is to go and put a formal common system in place. Find vendors rather than using the marketplace like I do and you know start making deals where you're going to get stuff sent out regularly and easier ordering processes. So as you grow, you get more structure built into it to formalize your Kanban system. But start early when you still have, um, you know, to get a little bit of value out of, it, out of it and not follow it precisely is better than having stockouts. And I, originally I did have, you know, a fair amount of times where I'd have to either cut a sale, you know, like that I wanted to run and not be able to do it because I didn't have enough inventory or it was too hard to get it into stock or anything like that. Or... I had to, um, you know, sell off of Amazon also, and I'd have to kind of cut their inventory available down because I just couldn't meet the orders if if a big order came in. So, yeah, just um, low key Kanban. Just uh, no, that's about all. I'm gonna beat this horse too much if I keep talking now. If you're watching this on YouTube, I would encourage you to go check out Continuous Improvement Central. Ah, Continuous Improvement Central. It's down in the uh, description below. Um, there's a free member guest membership you can get there. And if you're watching this on, if you're already a member, I encourage you to go and check out, um, you know, do a quick search for the reorder point form. And I'm going to start putting other little, little trinkets in there to help out with your processes. And you're not a full form that deserves its own, like its own entry here, but you know, I'll add them in other things along the way. So I encourage you to take a look around and uh, check your newsletter for any uh, updates about um, where I actually put these things. So just keep keep an eye out for that. Anyway, that's all. Have a good day.